the politics of fear gets you everything that you're afraid of. It's time to stand up and answer the politics of fear with the politics of courage. We are the ones we've been waiting for. And when people say, well, will you win? You know, how do you have a chance? My response is that, well, do we have a chance for jobs? You know, do we have a chance for a health care system? Do students have a chance that they won't be indentured servants for the rest of their lives? Do we have a chance that we're going to stop this incredible meltdown and burn up of the climate that's going on around us? You know, if we want a chance, we've got to take that chance and make it happen. We're not leaving this to chance. So what are we going to do? How are we going to get from here to there? I would suggest, as George Washington suggested more than 200 years ago, that we need a Department of Peace. Oh, I'm sorry. It's time. Right now, all we have is the Department of Defense, right? And it's no wonder that all we do is create wars. We have a military, and we like to pound on things. And that has to stop. And that's why we need a Department of Peace. It's time for our government and our society to encourage peace building at every level, from the household to international relations. So our next speaker is, in fact, uh, one of the founders of the Green Party of Rhode Island, who left Rhode Island to go help found the Green Party in Connecticut. I come from Connecticut, where they just had to shut down the Millstone Nuclear Power Plant because Long Island Sound was above 75 degrees and that water was too hot for the nuclear power plant. Okay, so are we getting these connections, folks? That our planet is, in, is too hot for Long Island Sound? That they can't cool down the nuclear power plant? And I'm very proud that Japan just started the first Green Party of Japan. Gee, I wonder why. A little thing called Fukushima? Yeah, that's what we're talking about. We're talking about catastrophic destruction. We're in a crazy country right now. I'm on the morning, I'm on a morning show four hours a day, every single morning, week, weekday morning, talking about insanity. Talking about 600,000 people in Texas losing their voter accessibility because they don't have an ID. What, uh, it used to be you couldn't vote unless you were a white, wealthy guy with property. Then they made universal access to the voting booth, allegedly, and then they changed who could get voted for. Ballot access became the problem, right? You had to get on the stupid ballot. So all of a sudden, they limited who was on the ballot. Then we found a way to actually get people on the ballot, and they said, oh my god, now we've got to stop people from voting again. So now we've got voter suppression. It's, it's George Orwell. War is peace. I love you. Let me kill you. You know, I mean, I mean, our best friends in Afghanistan are shooting our troops. It, 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 the world's gone nuts. That's I tell you. Lo and behold, to my surprise, in this race, it's like the political system and the political sentiment out there has turned on its head. Because this has actually been the easiest race that I have ever run. It's like giving out candy at Christmas or Kwanzaa or Hanukkah. Because people are so overjoyed to see that they don't have to march into the voting booth and pull the lever for one of two candidates who are both bought and paid for by Wall Street. 